there, I'm Musty Hobbit, and I just got back from too many games, and I wanted to show you a little bit of what I picked up, both at the show and from individuals who also attended the show with me. Uh, if you are at all familiar with the Cartridge Club, uh, we are a community of gamers, and uh, we have done this little thing over the last two years where we have gotten together uh, last year at just a random hotel in uh, Skokie, Illinois, and had our own little mini convention, Cartridge Club Con, or as we're calling it, C3. This year we decided to do this at Too Many Games, so we actually had, I think, upwards of 30 people from the Cartridge Club, uh, including uh, some of the younger individuals and children of those families also in, in attendance, uh, and so it was great to get to see everybody and to just spend an entire weekend with them. I'm, I'm a little on the socially tapped out range at this point just because of the number of people I got to hang out with. So that was so awesome to the, all of you who were there. Thank you. Hope to see all of you again very, very soon. But you're here to see what I got, and so I want to talk through, we'll kind of dance through what, uh, what we acquired here, but let's jump off with uh, one game I picked up from Jake from the Polykill Podcast. I got to meet Jake for the first time here, uh, and he is letting go of some of his non-Switch, or his Switch non-exclusives. And so uh, I picked up Lego Ninjago, which my son is, uh, the Lego Ninjago movie video game. My son loves Ninjago, uh, and this was a great opportunity to pick it up, so thank you, Jake. Next up was Troy, a Canadian Retro, and every year Troy does an extra live stream uh, and has been doing it for a number of years, at least three or four at this point. Uh, and last, uh, I'm not sure if it was last year or the year prior, I'd actually won uh, something uh, off of his stream and uh, just didn't have a chance to get it from him, so he finally delivered on that. I got a couple of things here, uh, one of them being uh, a copy here of Dungeon Magic, Sword of the Elements, and I have no idea what that's all about on the NES. Very, very poor label, Pokemon Blue for the Game Boy. And funny enough, he used the NES as a transport device for this DS game, uh, this loose DS game. He just, he opened, opened up the cart and let it just sort of dance in there <laughs> while it got to me. Uh, and I got a copy of Final Fantasy Tactics A2 Grimoire of the Rift, loose, uh, and so I will eventually find a um, case and manual for that and we'll have that complete eventually. Uh, I also got some other things from Troy out of his uh, his trade pile. I ended up buying a couple of things. Uh, one of them being the uh, Marvel Superhero Squad. Uh, this is on the DS and uh, my son and I just played through the one on the PlayStation 3 focusing on the Infinity Gauntlet. He had a really good time with it so I thought this would be more of the same although this is more of a 2D take where uh, the one on the console is a 3D uh, action game. Uh, also got Street Fighter Anniversary Collection for the Xbox and then picked up this game, although this game is no longer actually usable, but this is the Ultimate Collection Seekers Edition of Final Fantasy XI. It happens to be uh, to be somewhat sealed. There's a little bit of tearing on some of the uh, cellophane around it, but, uh, but yeah, this is one that uh, never played the online. MMOs frighten me because I know what type of individual I am, and I think it would probably be a bad move for me to start playing an MMO, but uh, at least in this case, I want to get all the numbered Final Fantasies. I'm not sure about if I want every edition of every uh, game that ever came out, but we'll get there. We'll see. Uh, next up is our friend Brad, who lives up in Milwaukee. Brad had a couple of games out of his trunk that I uh, made a good deal on. One of them was for Goof Troop for the Super Nintendo, and the other is for Skyward Sword, which I did not have and have not played yet. This may be one of the just, as far as like console Zeldas, I think this might be it as far as ones that I've missing. Um, so thank you, Brad. Again, super generous. Thank you for hooking me up there. Chris, Nintendo Hodge, uh, has been getting into the 3D printing scene lately and actually I picked up something from him, this fancy little Switch uh, game case. Uh, so the I can actually insert this on my shelf right here, uh, and it'll seat all of the Switch games here up to 10, which is funny because that Ninjago game is number 10. 10 physical Switch games, and this will fit perfectly right in that shelf there. The next set of pickups is from Jason, also known as NJ Retro. I've known Jason for a number of years, never had a chance to meet him in real life. He had a bunch of games that he was trying to let go of, and so I 
grabbed a stack of games from him. Uh, in with those games was the novelization of Crimson Skies High Road to Revenge, uh, which is uh, written by Eric Nyland and a few others. Eric Nyland did some of the Halo books, if you've ever read any of those. Uh, so I'm looking forward to kind of seeing how much this expands upon that universe. I picked up the lone Sega CD game for the show. Uh, and I just wanted it because it looked ridiculous. And this is uh, Kids On Site, which is uh, a bunch of kids working on a construction site. For the GameCube, Super Monkey Ball 2. Uh, a few Xbox titles. We got Tom and Jerry War of the Whiskers, which I think plays, it's like an arena battler, kind of like a Power Stone type of deal. Also got Spawn Armageddon, Raises Hell, Spy vs. Spy, Whacked. See about that. Uh, also for the Wii then, I picked up two other things from Jason. One of them is Real Heroes Firefighter. Lastly, another game with Final Fantasy attached to it. Final Fantasy Fables, Chocobo's Dungeon also on the Wii. And Jason, also again, super generous and thank you for working out a great deal. And again, it was awesome to get to meet you and your wife. Uh, and I hope that that's not the last time that we get to see you out at a show. I also ran into Joe from the YouTube channel Joe Goes Retro and he dropped off this nice little what I thought was a pin but it's actually a bottle opener uh, on a keychain so uh, it was nice to meet you Joe. At the show I hadn't really allocated a ton of money for this budget I just recently upgraded my second uh, Elgato key light uh, for some of the efforts I'm doing on stream uh, and so I was kind of slow to start to make purchases uh, at this show. When I picked up this game, uh, I had heard it recommended in one of the Discord groups that I am in, but uh, I grabbed it. It's called Tornado Outbreak for the Xbox 360. And as I understand, it sort of plays a little bit like a Katamari game in that you start as a small tornado and you get bigger as you pick up things. Hilarity ensues, but it looks like there's a lot of fun to be had there. Uh, I'm interested to give that a try one of these days. I ran into Back in the Day Gamer, uh, on Saturday somewhat early and uh, he and I were walking around and doing some some you know rifling through games and things like that and he saw this game in a stack of uh, a five dollar bin and he was like you should have this game do you have it do you have this game I was like I don't have this game he's like I'm gonna get you this game so he picked up uh, the what's it called? Scheherazade right Shahrazad, Shahrazad for the NES. So thank you, back in the day, gamer. It was great to see you again. I've seen you at like almost every show that I go to now. Um, it was always great to run into you. At one of the tables, they had a bunch of Super Famicom games, and I thought, let me rifle through these, see what I can find. Maybe we can find something interesting. I did end up grabbing a copy of Front Mission, uh, which is a tactical RPG with like vertical tanks, and uh, it's by SquareSoft. So. I picked that up. I'll have to translate that one. I'm pretty sure that there's going to be a fair amount of reading to have to do, so uh, I'll use my Retron 5 to apply a language patch on that. And the other one I grabbed was, I believe this is Adventure Island, or Super Adventure Island, rather, uh, for the Super Famicom here. There was one table that for a majority of Saturday and a lot of Sunday were doing buy two, get one free, buy, and then on Sunday was doing buy one, get one free on everything at their booth which was just great we worked out a number of different deals um, i actually made one deal with uh ryan it's rocket sauce and then some random guy who was having trouble finding a third game so he had two in his hand ryan had two in his hand and so did i uh, so we ended up each putting those together walked up there uh, and they said okay well they were all $10 games. They said, okay, that'll be 40. I'm like, well, you take 30, and she took 30. So we all basically got them for half price, which worked out really well. I picked up the Sonic Genesis collection for the PSP and a copy of Kim Possible, What's the Switch? Later on, I went and did a deal uh, with Trav uh, from Polykill Podcast, uh, and he uh, had one game in mind, and so I, he's like, that's all I want. I'm like, okay, well, I'll go find a game so that we can have our buy one, get one. And so I picked up Tron 2.0 Killer App for the original Xbox. And then toward the end of the day, I was looking through their uh, shelves again, and I was like, well, you know what? I seem to like all of the even-numbered Soul Calibers the most, so I did not have a copy of Soul Calibur 4 for the PS3, which has Darth Vader and uh, Starkiller from Force Unleashed as playable characters. So I picked that up, and then as the free game, I picked this up only because I feel like I've seen the cover before, 
This is called Scourge Hive on the DS. Uh, I, I know very little on this other that you are, I don't know, you're in some kind of biological, mechanical, and energy-based uh, facility, and you're trying to like eradicate this. I bet it's a scourge. That's probably what we're doing. A few more things left. This one uh, came out of, it came as a total surprise to me because I didn't expect to see it, and that is uh, a copy for the Famicom of Final Fantasy 1 and 2. Uh, now, this box is bigger than you would expect a Famicom box to be because the cart is actually oversized. It has both games on the same cartridge. In addition, uh, there is a, a pretty substantial manual and uh, I believe it probably is akin to the Adventurer's Guide that comes with Final Fantasy 1 on the NES uh, and then a map of both uh, Final Fantasy 1 and Final Fantasy Two. The booth that this was at, the guy didn't seem to be very, very, I don't know, seemed to be really stringent on price or he was even looking up eBay when people would come up and ask for something that didn't have a price tag, which was most of everything. And uh, I managed to get him to come down a little bit, so uh, I felt like that was a little bit of a victory, but it's in amazing shape and uh, it was one of the, yeah, I'd like to have every Famicom uh, and Super Famicom Final Fantasy. And so this is another step getting us closer to doing just that. Now this one wasn't actually at the show. This is something that uh, that my co-host, Ryan, it's Rocket Sauce, brought for me, but it felt appropriate to hold on to this until the end. Uh, he found this at a, a Goodwill or something. It's the Final Fantasy Trading Arts uh, Renoa figure. Uh, and this is one of, there's a, a short lineup that has uh, Cloud, Yuna, Sephiroth, and Renoa. He was like, do you want it? It's a couple bucks. I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll take it. So he then proceeded to drive it all the way out to Philadelphia to bring it to me. This will go in my little Final Fantasy VIII shrine that I've got over there. But that is not the only figure that I picked up at this show. I did not expect to come across uh, these figures there, nor did I have any... Uh, I mean, nothing I picked up here was on a list. I didn't make a list this time just because I really wasn't... I, I didn't want to feel obligated to purchase things. But when I found a couple things that really jumped out to me, I was like, I will take it. If you know me at all, or if you've been paying attention to me on Twitch, I've been playing through Final Fantasy VIII over the past three months or so, uh, trying to play that to completion on the date of its 20th anniversary. So check me out on Twitch. I stream that every Friday night, or sometimes Thursday I may move that up, depending on what my weekends look like. But uh, when I saw that they had figures for some of the Guardian Forces at this booth, I was like, I, I, I have to. Like, there's no reason not to pick them up. There was a short run of eight Guardian Force figures. This is number two in the series, and this is Siren, um, who is more of your, like, status effect type of Guardian Force, if you've never played. Um, but she also comes with this little cactar figure as well. I ended up grabbing this. Uh, it had been opened at some point, it's been resealed, but I really don't care. Uh, this is going to look great among all the other figures that I'm picking up for Final Fantasy VIII, and it'll look great next to this other one, which I had to take out of the box, but the, I do have the box for it. I managed to find a creative way to get it home in my check or in my carry-on luggage, um, but this figure is Cerberus, who is a three-headed Three-headed dog with this pretty menacing looking. He's number three in the series. Uh, so there's five more to go if I have a desire to do these, but some of them, uh, Bahamut in particular, is uh, pretty, pretty expensive looking. So we'll have to see how, that, how all that goes, but I could not pass this up. It was just too cool. And it, you know, obviously opportunistic with timing on me playing the games currently. So I'm pretty sure that's it. That is everything that I picked up at Too Many Games and at C3. I'm really looking forward to doing uh, that sort of get together again real soon and uh, me and the other organizers are already in talks as far as where C3 2020 will be. We'll let you all know when that news comes out uh, but for now I'm gonna go get these cleaned and cataloged and put up on the shelves and I'm pretty excited uh, to get a chance to play these pretty soon. Uh, and if I do play them, uh, you probably will be best served to find me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash mustyhobbit, where I stream every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday night, and 
uh, I'll be sometimes dropping in some of these along with the Cartridge Club Game of the Month. And again, as I mentioned before, Final Fantasy VIII on most Fridays. So thank you all for coming by. I hope you had a great time. And to those of you who are also at TMG, I'm interested to see what you have picked up as well. Uh, but to take care of yourself, be good to each other. 